Yaman! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you spicy deep fried chicken. Alright, so you're gonna need some red pepper, cayenne pepper, a tablespoon of sea salt, salt, I use sea salt, an onion, a large onion, and cayenne pepper grounded cayenne pepper about two cups of coconut oil I use coconut oil or you can use any cooking oil all-purpose flour for frying if you're using plain flour just add a pinch of baking powder it's optional too the baking powder is optional one pound chicken parts this here chicken parts has one thigh a chicken's leg and two wings chicken is frozen so I'm gonna defrost it if you can if you can just wait for it to defrost by itself that's best but if you're in a hurry just Pour some water in a big bowl or a container and add the frozen chicken parts to the frost. But these chicken parts are frozen but they are they're they're the frost. They're mainly they're close to the frosting. Alright, so what I like to do is just trim off that big extra fat that tends to be on the chicken um, the chicken's wing. Add a tablespoon, maybe three tablespoons of distilled white vinegar to the water and kind of wash the chickens properly, wash the skin. If you like skin, you can always keep the skin on, but rub it and wash it properly. A lot of, the, a lot of times, the supermarkets already do all of this part. It's prepared properly and clean. All you probably gotta do is just, you know, tear off the, the skin, the chicken's skin. But this, these chicken, I bought them in wholesale, where they sell chicken chicken parts bulk all right this is the chicken's thigh remove the skin cut off the butt and trim off excess fat get in between the chicken's thigh where the bone is and remove clogged bloods do as you see me doing and remove the chicken's skin. The chicken's thigh tend to be very fatty and mucky. You gotta spend some time and kind of clean it properly. If you were cooking breasts, all you would have to do is just take off the chicken's skin from the chicken's breast and then just cut that one big piece of breast in half. That way you have two pieces. It's easier to fry. Alright, so once you remove all the, the fat, the, the skin, the clogged blood, just use your fingers and kind of rub the chicken clean. Sorry for you guys, some of you guys that don't want to touch raw meat. It was in the old days where 
where you would have to go outside and kill a chicken yourself. You would have to touch a raw meat. So I know everybody got so sophisticated, but somebody gotta do it. In the restaurants, that's what the workers do. They have to touch it with their hands. They probably use gloves in the restaurants. All right, this is a leg. I was gonna tear off the leg, but I'm gonna keep it to sh just to demonstrate that you can keep you can keep the leg, you can keep the chicken skin on if you want. So it's clean the skin properly. With these chicken's parts, that's near spoiling. It's not spoiled, but it's just old. You gotta use plenty distilled white vinegar. Because look on the chicken's color. You see how it still has that pink, nice pink color? It's good, but it's just old. Who's to tell how long they had, you know, how long they, they had this chicken on ice? All right, so once you rinse it off, once you rinse it off once and clean it properly, Pour in some fresh water in, a, in the same container. Wash out. You know what I like to do? I wash out the container before I pour this water in again. So once I pour this water in, I pour a drizzle, a couple drops of distilled white vinegar, and then I'm gonna rinse, rinse off these chickens, these chicken parts again. So do as you see me doing, and kind of fold in the chicken's wing, and wash, wash the chicken parts properly and put it in a bowl where we're gonna season it and allow it to marinate. Alright, so the chicken's parts are prepared, clean and ready for deep frying. We'll take an onion, remove the brown leaf. Remember now, just the brown leaf, first layer of the onion is the strongest. Not unless there's spoilage like this one here, you know, it's, it's not good. I know a lot of people might say I need to add more ingredients, more seasoning, seasonings to the, to the chicken. But have you know, onion with plain pepper makes lovely fried chicken. So do as you see me doing and slice the onions. The onion. Slice the onion. You slice it because after marinating we're gonna have to shake off all this ingredients, all this onion and so forth. The bigger slice the onions are, what I'm saying don't dice it. Slice the onions. The onion. All right, now measure, level off, one tablespoon. Hold in but a little teeny bit of salt. I use sea salt. So for one pound chicken, I'm using one tablespoon of sea salt. Now, measure and add red pepper, the grounded red pepper, cayenne pepper, grounded cayenne pepper. It's just stain guys, it's not dirty. Make sure, make sure they clear, they clear from now. All right, you can use your finger. It's best if you use your finger and massage the onions, the onion into the chicken sparks. 
Measure and add like quarter teaspoon of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar. All right, do do as you see me doing and kind of break in the onion and massage the chicken parts. I'm using half scotch bonnet pepper, but you can use about measure and add about half tablespoon of shredded red pepper. So this is our grounded cayenne pepper. Measure a tablespoon and add it to the chicken parts in the bowl. This part you cannot avoid. You gotta get down and dirty. You gotta get down and dirty. So what I like to do is take the chickens parts hold them together and rub them rub them on each other rub them together and kind of coat each chicken part evenly Just remember, wash your fingers and your hands properly with soap and water after you finish. And if you can, if you can wear gloves doing this part, I recommend that too as well. If I had gloves, I probably would, would have worn them if I had gloves. Alright, so get in between the chicken's thigh and massage the cayenne powder in between the chicken's grooves and corners and stuff like that. And take the, 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 you remember we folded the chicken's wing? You gotta take it apart and rub the cayenne pepper all in between it and then fold it back again. So once you do this part properly, you don't have to do it again. You don't even have to touch the chicken again. Use a lid and cover the bowl sealed and allow it to marinate. Overnight is best, but if you're in hurry, about an hour or two before frying is good. All right, because I was with the red pepper, remember I was telling you, you can add that red pepper. If you don't have the scotch bunny pepper, don't have the scotch bunny pepper, you can always use the red pepper, the shredded red pepper. If you have access to old red pepper, just take a couple of them and chop, you know, cut it in two and then put it in the marinating chicken, the chicken marinating. All right, so saw me just clean that bag because I was touching it with my chicken, chicken fingers and chicken hand. So just clean it off with some white vinegar. Now you can get a bowl, you can get a container with a seal or a Ziploc or get a clean plastic bag like this. Measure and add half cup flour. This is all purpose flour. But if you are using plain flour, you can always pinch like a pin, literally a pinch of baking powder and add to it. This is all purpose. It's mixed with baking powder already. All right, so measure a teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder or grounded cayenne pepper and add it to the flour. Like I said, you can use a bag like this. This is the eight by 12 clean plastic bag. You can use a Ziploc or you can use a plastic container with a, with a, with a, with a lid that seals. All right, so once you do this part, put your flour dry flour mix aside for later.
Now, for two heat, I'm using a medium sized saucepan. For this, for this stove gauge and four, be sure the saucepan does not have any water in it. And just allow the saucepan to get hot for a minute before you add oil. I went and sleep, woke up, and this is what the chicken, chicken's part that's been marinating looks like. Alright, so I'm just showing it to you. We are getting ready to deep fry these chicken parts. Alright, so it's been a minute. There's no water in the saucepan. Add cooking oil. I'm using coconut oil, but you can use any cooking oil. Alright, remember now. Alright, this is a tip. In deep frying on the stove with these saucepan, you need to know and remember that do not fill the oil up no more than a quarter way up. This is very important. Don't fill it halfway. Definitely do not fill it up to the top. Fill it quarter way up, one third the most. All right, so once you do that, allow the oil to get hot. Use those gauges on four, medium low. Allow. So you know, it will take 15 minutes to fry. If the stove's gauge was on 6, medium high, it would take 12 minutes to fry these chicken parts. So allow. Once you see a little smoke, that's a sign to say it's ready for frying. The oil is ready for frying. This is our chicken part. It's been marinating for quite some time now. So another tip. When you flour the chicken for frying, do not add it too early. Add the chicken to the flour three minutes or so before frying. If you add the chicken parts to the flour too early, it's going to sweat. Some people do that and flour it twice so that you can have all this flour around the chicken to eat. But I don't do that. Some people add these chicken parts in milk or buttermilk. That's a different um, deep frying chicken method. Because it can be done that way too as well. Alright, so like I said, three minutes before frying, kind of use it, the cooking fork and a spoon or whatever else in your next hand and kind of kind of Remove the seasonings, the vegetables. Remove the onions alone. That's what we were using. So kind of remove the onions. And then place the chicken's parts in your flour dough. In your dry flour dough. And like I said, it's a different cooking method for frying chicken with milk. So I'm not even going to mention the method. But just to say... If you were using buttermilk or milk, now would be the time you would dip it in the milk, coat the chicken properly with, with the milk or buttermilk, and then you add it to the flour. And then you probably wouldn't do the shaking method that I'm doing with this. You would probably place some flour on a, on a plate or something and then, and then flour it. And then shake off the excess flour before frying. Alright, so, so back to this method. After you add the chicken's parts to your dry flour dough, in this bag I just make a big little oak, um, hair hole inside and then shake it and coat all chicken's parts evenly. With the container now, you will just use the lid, cover it and then shake it. Shake the container, coating the chicken's parts. Alright, see I was telling you, it's not even a couple minutes already and you see it starts to sweat. You see the smoke, that's the sign, that's our sign to say the oil is ready. Let's 
before frying, and keep your bag, your bag a final shake. Then add big piece of chicken part first. So in my case, I'm using the chicken sty. So when removing it from the flour, remove excess flour. Kind of use your hand and shake it. Shake off all the excess flour. And then slowly add it to the eating oil. While adding it to the eating oil, watch the oil for overflow. You don't want the oil to overflow and make your stove up and might cause fire and hurt you. So add them one at a time and watch the oil. Find a spot where you didn't drop any and drop the chicken parts in the eating, the floured chicken parts in the eating oil. And remember now, you're dealing with fire and you're dealing with heat. And you're dealing with a oil, oil that can burn you. So remember that and be cautious. Allow, don't move it. The stove gauge is on four, allow. This is the, the third tip with frying chicken. When you're frying chicken, do not move it, move it every minute in the eating oil. You got to allow it to fry on one side properly before you turn it on the other side. Before you flip it or rotate it. Spicy, deep fried chicken. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe. You got to allow the chicken parts to fry. Do not move it. I'm just showing it to you right now. But you do not move the chicken parts every minute. It's been only six minutes now. I didn't move it any at all from the time you saw me put it in. It's been seven minutes halfway between the time now would be a good time to flip the chicken part look on each one and rotate it on the other side whatever side was on top you now know you have to flip it to the bottom I know the chicken look like it's ready, but it's not. It's because of the grounded cayenne pepper. Why it looks ready, but it's not. All right, so once you do that, I'm not squeezing the chicken. I'm just making sure that the chicken is emerged under the oil, under the eating oil. Allow. Those gauges on four medium low. And remember what I said: if you were cooking on six medium high, you probably would have finished by now. No, no, not now. In 12 minutes. All right. So get ready. A bowl or a basket. Add paper towel. Clean paper towel to the bowl or inside the basket, like a. Um, a bamboo basket or a kind of, you know, a basket. It can be in plastic basket, but just add, add a clean, you can add a clean kitchen towel to it if you're cooking plenty. Alright, so it's been 12 minutes. And this is what it looks like. This is what a spicy deep fried chicken looks like. It's almost ready to eat. It looks like it's almost ready to eat. So let's go through, look on the pieces, and see what's frying and what part is not getting fried and then kind of rotate it to the bottom. So we're going to let it stay for another three minutes and finish. Voila. 
15 minutes later and this is what it looks like it's spicy deep fried chicken all right so look on your pieces you know that we put it in the thigh first so it's ready i'm sure it's ready thigh doesn't have that much meat and it's mostly bone so it's ready so i removed the thigh the chicken's thigh i'm just gonna let the leg fry on that side some more and remove the chicken's skin they are definitely ready all right so this is the leg that has on the skin it's recommend after frying you move the heating oil to a cool spot on the stove and allow you know just allow it to cool to know your chicken is cooked properly all you need to do is cut take the chicken's thigh or whatever piece you fry and cut from the middle down cut it from the middle down take a use a sharp knife and cut from the middle down and then look in between if you see blood it's not cooked if it's clean and pretty like this it's cooked but if you follow the timing you can't go wrong this is spicy deep fried chicken visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe you must try frying these chicken chicken for yourself and give us feedback and thanks to a few of you who give us feedback on the other videos spicy deep fried chicken Visit jamaicadinners.com, subscribe, like, and share. Ah, okay then, I'm going to test this for you now. So this is the chicken's wing that we just fried up. You can obviously see it's cooked, you see the cayenne pepper. Initially, it's not spicy, like it's burned in me or anything. A child can eat this. Just like with one particular popular restaurant, when you buy their spicy chicken, you're not, it's not hot per se. It just has a spicy flavor. And that's what I'm tasting right now. I can taste the cayenne pepper. I can taste the flavor of the chicken, pure chicken. It's crispy. flavorful meaning it has the pure chicken flavor crunchy I'm not tasting the spiciness like I said initially but when I bite certain corner pieces and so forth I can taste the spice a little bit of spiciness you could probably get away with using additional tablespoon. So you see, I just showed you the chicken style again, it's cooked. I'm enjoying this, this chicken's wing. You know, fried chicken is nice with french fries bread, dinner roll, rice, vegetables. What I like to eat it with at times is with sweet and sour sauce. I just dip it in sweet and sour sauce and eat it. One time I used to mix mayonnaise and ketchup together and mix it and dip it in it and use it. guys until next time bye yeah man just so you know grounded cayenne pepper so that i don't hear nobody say that i'm using powder seasoning jamaica dinner using powder seasoning now 
no way, we'll never use powder seasonings.